Hey guys, so as usual, I wanted to bring an updated Cyber Dragon deck profile for the current format, and so obviously I'm quite motivated by that day two finish by Savage Pete at the NAWCQ with Cyber Dragons, which is very impressive, and you can certainly go check out his deck profile on my channel. Now, I'm also quite motivated by the top 32 NAWCQ uh, deck list by Imad, also on my channel. He played a blind second sprite deck with some striker cards, uh, and so that kind of got me thinking in terms of, you know, how can we use uh, Sky Striker Engine in Cyber Dragons as well, because we're also a blind second strategy. And so, you know, Striker cards in Cyber Dragons not necessarily new back in like 2019, maybe like early 2020, uh, when everyone was basically putting uh, Engage and Striker uh, package in any deck. Uh, Cyber Dragons uh, were definitely one of them. Now, of course, you know what's changed since then. We do have uh, some new cards such as Thrust that can allow you to get access to Engage or realistically a lot of other cards in your deck. And also on top of that, we have the master, new, the new master rule rather that came into effect. Uh, so some things have definitely changed since then, and I really want to try it out. And I actually just noticed that uh, Yassine had posted uh, Cyber Dragon trap uh, deck profile with uh, some striker cards as well so definitely we're on the same lines of thinking and definitely go check that out as well so I'm gonna try something new and uh, try to do a deck profile using like a simulator rather than IRL cards uh, just to make things a little bit more uh, simpler uh, so I guess we can just get started with some of the more core Cyber Dragon cards, and in terms of these ratios, really nothing has changed. The 1 Jizuku, 3 Cyber Dragons original, the double Galaxy Soldier, 3 Core, double Naxxer, and 3 Hers. Uh, this is basically like the cookie cutter ratio in almost every Cyber Dragon uh, deck list. Uh, you can certainly change some things around, but for the most part, this is like the, as standard as it gets. Uh, Cyber Dragon spells, 3 Emergency, also very standard, 1 Repair Plant, 1 Rough System, and one overload fusion. I decided not to play cyberload fusion. I was trying it out initially. I ultimately ended up cutting it out uh, just because, you know, it's a good card, especially in like a grind game. Let's say, you know, you have overflow and let's say you banish some cards, pop some cards. And then on top of that, you use like uh, cyberload fusion just to return those uh, banished materials back to deck and then pop a couple more back row. But I was finding that, you know, uh, of course, for one, you know, if you ever draw Cyberload Fusion in your opening hand, it's usually not very good. And also, I'm actually not main decking Overflow either, uh, just because I really want to dedicate to uh, OTKing uh, with this main deck. So I decided not to play it at all. You can certainly uh, decide to play it. And also, Thrust, if it ever does become live and you have it in your hand, uh, it can also get access to Overload Fusion, which is very nice. Uh, the next little sets of cards are kind of maybe up for debate. The Triple Machine Dupe, Triple uh, Clock Knight, and the 3 Duality, which is of course a new addition to the deck. So I think there's definitely arguments to be made. Maybe you should not be playing all three of these, uh, or rather maybe uh, you need to change up the ratios a little bit. I definitely understand that. For me, for now, I decided to still play with Machine Dupe, for example, because uh, again, if you do have Thrust Live, uh, you can certainly have access to this easier. Uh, but on top of that, right now we're in a format like Kashira, or let's say Flunder, like with Shifter, any kind of banishing effects like that, your Galaxy Soldier just becomes dead and you cannot use its effect to be able to special uh, because it does pitch for cost. And so because of that, I felt that, you know, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't have access to your Nova Infinity line of play. And I really wanted to have access to Machine Dupe to still be able to do those plays. And especially when, you know, post side, if they make you go first, uh, Machine Dupe is a great way to still set up like your Infinity line of play. Uh, and now admittedly though, you know, resolving this card is definitely nowhere near as good as it was even a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, the game has evolved quite a bit as well and so you know setting up infinity is not really that amazing but and you know what that's kind of like the best you can do in a lot of cases with this deck Clockwork Knight is very good. Obviously, it can conflict with Machine Dupe just because of that stat boost on your baby Cyber Dragons, but otherwise, it really puts the pressure on your opponent and forces them to like try to negate and destroy it. Otherwise, they risk uh, losing their entire board through a Contact Fusion. But again, this is also something similar with uh, Shifter-like effects. Uh, you unfortunately cannot Contact Fuse into Fortress or Mega Fleet under you know any kind of banishing kind of effect. So this card would be a lot better once Kashira hopefully kind of comes out of the mix of the current format as the best deck, and also hopefully Shifter maybe finally gets hit. Uh, on the next ban list and so uh, in terms of duality this is certainly a really good addition to cyber dragons i love it because it can convert something as useless as just one galaxy soldier into something like rampage which not only puts pressure in terms of otk but also allows you to start some plays because you can send something like hers and core and get that core back to hand from the grave or yeah rather and so uh the other good thing is that you know it does have kind of like uh, uh it can return those cards and then uh be able to draw um Probably doesn't come up as much uh, in this deck, uh, but it's definitely there. Uh, now, in terms of duality though, the one problem I have with this is that it does not fix the main issue of Cyber Dragons, uh, which is that, you know, it always requires like very two specific card combos to be able to do anything. Uh, on this, on its own, this card will not do anything for you, unfortunately, and you can say that, but pretty much every uh, card in this deck. Uh, so that's kind of like the major downside, but it definitely still helps in terms of boosting its consistency. 
So next we can finally go on to the striker cards. Uh, we have the one hornet drones and double engage and this is where you can kind of change the ratios a bit. The widow anchor and the afterburner and the jamming wave. So uh, originally I was trying out with uh, multiple widow anchors. I decided to, I, I at least still wanted jamming waves though which a lot of times normally uh, people don't play. But I really like as a going second deck you know I really like uh, just getting rid of uh, at least force out that back row. Afterburner is always nice and the great thing about these is that you know it for the most part we will force out like a monster negate in which case then your talents or thrusts become live on which makes it really really deadly when you're going second and speaking of thrusts and talents i think my friend drew made a good point i think this is actually like the best card in the game right now it is so good whether you go first and you get hand trap you can really punish them by setting something as powerful as like d barrier for example going second you can just make almost any card live which is really crazy talents of course has always been good going second in this deck a lot of times you're probably taking your opponent's monster instead just so you have uh, even more lethal damage for game uh, also, uh, you know, playing a lot more normal spells, uh, powerhouse cards like Regeki and Feather Duster, just to be able to clear your opponents. Uh, hopefully, you know, you have access to something like Thrust to get that live. Originally, I was trying Double Lightning Storm in the main. Uh, I was finding, you know, against Runic, it was kind of getting difficult, and I just wanted to be able to banish that fountain. But you can certainly go back and forth between the two. And so, in terms of the extra deck, I would say uh, Almirage and Anima, very straightforward. Uh, nothing special. You definitely need at least Almirage. Uh, Anima, you can kind of debate. I think it can definitely uh, punish players who play into those zones and also if you ever give like a Nibiru token if you play it you can always uh, suck it up with the anima and you can always uh, make sure to make a habit of putting Jizuku in those uh, zones under the extra monster zone. So just the one Kagari in terms of Sky Striker extra deck monster that you're summoning off of Hornet Drones. Uh, the funny thing with this is that it's a machine which means you can actually go into Seeger by you know any monster that's considered a Cyber Dragon and then with uh, Kagari which is not only funny but it's actually kind of practical because Kagari's link arrow is actually pretty bad uh, and so being able to convert that into Seeger is actually uh, kind of nice to have. I decided to play Dark instead of Azalea. I was testing out Azalea and you know Azalea would be really good if you could go into it with like Hornet Drones and Kagari. Uh, unfortunately Kagari is a fire and I decided that you know what let's just go into Dark because uh, more often than not your opponent probably has something dark in their grave and you can uh, special it and it just pushes more uh, for game uh, in terms of OTK and it's a really good card to have. If you can, f uh, if you want to play Azalea instead uh, you can certainly go for that or even something like, like Nightmare Monsters. I personally like to have something that can uh, get rid of back row like Phoenix. Uh, it's certainly up to you. Uh, in terms of Xyz, we have one Nova, one Infinity, and one Zeus. So this one kind of gets me a little anxious because I always like to play double of these. But the extra deck for this is very tight, which I should have explained is why I do not play Pot of Prosperity. At least that's one of the reasons. As I mentioned, this is kind of like a very focused uh, OTK kind of main deck. And so that's why I also opted not to play Prosperity, even though any other variant I would just because uh, this deck has consistency issues historically. And also you can play Powerbond if you want that package. I decided not to because Duality actually uh, pushes for OTK quite easily and you also have cards like uh, Talents and also something like Dark that can also push for game. Uh, so this can definitely get, uh, be a little difficult if you're, let's say you're facing Kershia and they rip out the Nova then you just, your Infinity Line of play is just completely dead which gets me nervous. Uh, actually it's funny, one time I got Maximus I would send the Nova which also allows me to bring out Rampage basically and then with like Duality I can just like put back that Nova so that I still have that line of play live. Uh, so I think that's something that you need to be aware of and especially when you're now uh, playing Striker cards. Uh, uh, when you summon Nova or Infinity, um, you can be a little selective. You might want to summon it into the extra monster zone sometimes, just because all the striker cards, you do need your main monster zones clear, uh, and just so you can, like, let's say, set uh, Widow Anchor and then pass. Uh, and so definitely make sure to uh, kind of start out your turn with uh, striker cards, because, again, your main monster zones have to be free. Zeus is always nice, uh, especially against, you know, some like back or heavy decks if you can manage to get the effect off at least so uh it's definitely nice to have double rampage i think that's necessary because of duality you're probably this is like your main thing to bring out through duality and you know you want to make sure that you have another one that you can bring out uh, regularly uh but uh otherwise i think it's very very good card in this deck aside from pushing for otk just can help you enable uh your starting plays with her sending of hers and core or even naxxer sometimes double fortress of course this is because of clockwork knight and you want to just contact fuse your opponent's uh, monsters away but it's also through duality you can actually bring out Cyber Twin Dragon, uh, which is really uh, pushes for gain because this on its own would be 5600 direct. And uh, if you can get something Fortress like let's say 3 monsters, so 3000, then that's game on its own. 
Mega Fleet, of course, is also very strong, getting rid of your opponent's extra monster zone monster. And then also with duality, you can bring out Cyber uh, End Dragon, or you can even bring out something like Cyber Laser. Realistically, and uh, through duality, of course, realistically, you could even just completely cut a level 10 target because I'm um, just trying this out for now. It's also, again, to try to push for game if it does become lethal. Uh, but maybe I cut that out for a second Nova because I really do think it's important to have at least two Novas, but certainly up for uh, discussion. Uh, in terms of the side deck, uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. So this, of course, the main deck wise is very going second heavy, right? Uh, and so, you know, uh, post side or uh, so it becomes a little challenging where are they going to make you go first or they still decide or they still going to decide to go first and you go second. And usually within the past couple of years, it's always been the case where they would actually just still go first anyways, because uh, decks nowadays, the way it's developed, uh, developed, um, they're really, really strong uh, going first anyways. But now I'm finding uh, at the NAWCQ, there were actually a lot of going second decks. And so uh, in the current game, uh, it's actually pretty feasible uh, to be able to go second, especially when you have powerhouse cards like Thrust, which can get you access to anything. Uh, so that's why I decided with the side, I had to be sort of careful and be able to play cards that can be good going first or second, which meant that I was going to choose high impact hand traps, which is something like Nibiru. In worst case, it's a light monster that you can pitch off Galaxy Soldier. And then Droll is also very nice in OTK based strategies because, you know, in a lot of like kind of like mid range or kind of strategy where they might not be able to set up too much, like if you Droll your opponent, like you're just kind of delaying the inevitable and they're just going to go off the turn after if you don't kill them or set up a really oppressive board. And so with uh, OTK kind of strategies, it's really useful because, you know, your opponent can't do much and you just make sure that they don't have another turn by just straight up killing them. So I think Droll is very good in a OTK kind of deck like Cyber Dragons. Uh, Double Lightning Storm that I mentioned was originally in the main. You can certainly try that out as well. At least it's a normal spell, so you can definitely search off Thrust, which is nice. Uh, and then just the third Cosmic Cyclone. I think Cosmic's just such a good and uh, the best background removal right now, in a sense. Aside from like Evening, because that's more of a generic board wipe. Uh, really, really good to have. Overflow, uh, usually you do main this, uh, even if you're playing a going second uh, Cyber Dragon strategy. I decided to just uh, completely focus on OTK and just uh, not uh, put the overflow in, but I would definitely put this in post side, uh, especially when you don't know whether they're going to make you go first or second. And D Bear is also a very strong one when, uh, let's say, you think you're going to go first or you decide to actually go first yourself post side. Uh, if Thrust becomes alive, you can obviously set that. And I was actually thinking something like Deck Devastation Virus, uh, because this deck could technically play it, I guess, because you could like uh, tribute off like a Command Deck Fortress. It's, you know, against Sprite, it can be uh, pretty good, but I decided maybe not this time around uh, and then we have some floodgates and rivalry and grave the super ancient organism so floodgates and especially like these ones are uh, they're actually good going second as well it can really break boards and especially let's say a branded is a key example you know you're gonna get gimmick puppet lock right uh which honestly doesn't matter if you draw any of these uh, especially grave of the super ancient organism because you just set this and their turn starts you have this up they really cannot play and i play branded so i know the feeling and are they gonna side cosmic cyclone when they go first against cyber dragon Honestly, probably not unless they actually know your list. So you're probably going to win that game. Rivalry is also very strong against something like Branded as well and can be pretty uh, good, especially when in combination with Clockwork Knight, uh, it just straight up locks your opponent because, you know, the monsters on their field will be machine, but um, uh, with Rivalry, then, you know, chances are they're not playing a machine deck. So they just kind of get locked and they can't summon anything else. Whereas for you, uh, it's very, very easy because pretty much everything, uh, literally everything is uh, machine except for maybe some of the extra deck. So that's it for the uh, deck profile. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting if you did i can certainly share some uh replays on uh yg omega playing this deck obviously you know it is still a rogue deck you do have to have realistic expectations i'm personally very excited to continue to try to make this list better and make like the striker cards uh, feasible in cyber dragons and also just like as an otk strategy so uh definitely uh thank you for watching uh thanks to all my patreons for uh supporting the channel as always and uh well take care guys